some of the world's finest textologists and doctors that deal with gold. Well, everybody agreed with the New York guys because they said, hey, forget about black mold, yellow mold, green mold, blue mold. We're not going to tell you what's good mold and what's bad mold. We're not going to tell you how much is good for you or how much isn't because each one of us has a different tolerance to all the different molds. We're going to tell you that all molds are bad and that so, someone is affected by some mold somewhere all the time. So we're going to tell you, clean up the moisture and clean up the mold and the story. And don't get all hung up on whether it's black mold or yellow mold or green mold. It doesn't matter. Clean it up. Get it out of there. Because the problem is that the, the, the issue is so dynamic in nature and every one of us has different tolerances to different things and it's virtually impossible to tell what levels are good and bad to the general population. You can't just make a black and white statement. So they didn't tell yeah, Well that makes a lot of sense. I mean, <coughs> mold isn't good for you and it doesn't matter what, I mean, it it's doesn't also, matter if it's that stacky botcher's black mold. It's, it's all about a moisture problem. And you could clean the mold up, but you, like you said, you still got to worry about what caused the mold, right? Right. So, I mean, you're, you could send your 14-year-old in to a soap and water to clean off mold off the table. That's, anybody could clean mold off the table. It's what caused that mold to be on the table that you have to figure out. And, 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 and like, like when you do your work, you try to figure that out too, I mean. No, we, we f figured out. If it's over my head, I call you. I call Scott. I call Tom. I, I, I mean, we want to know why that exists before. Because we... why would you clean it if you if it's going to come back? <laughs> you know, Precisely. you know, I, I've, I've seen <clears throat> rehab homes, and they paint the attics white, and so then two years later, these people call me back up and like, we bought this house and there's molds growing on the white paint. <laughs> and I go in there, and the rehabber painted it. Right. And then I go to the basement, and the humidifier is on, the sub pump is in seal, the basement leaks. Right. You know, you know, and then they got like dog bowl dishes right. all over the house, and plants, and you know, they cook pasta, whatever. You know, they take, they got girls that take twenty minute showers. Right. And the fans, there's no fans in the bathrooms. Right. And it just grows on their little white paint because they right. never figured out the problem. Exactly. Because it's gonna come back. Absolutely. So you could spend money, clean a house, if you haven't figured out why it was there in the beginning, it's going to come back and you just wasted right. somebody's you, money. You wasted all that money. That's right. So you got to figure it out. And, yeah. and, and, and and home inspectors, uh, mold contractors like yourself, uh, HVAC, uh, uh, energy auditors, you know, all your uh, experts in the field, can, can help out try to locate this problem and absolutely and that's why the Cleveland Indoor Environmental Group is, is a very unique and special group because we employ all the disciplines when we have a problem we employ all the disciplines to, to, to get to the root of the problem and solve the issue and, and uh, after doing thousands and thousands of homes over 18 years you know we, we've done probably 8,000 homes in that time and probably done 12,000 inspections. Have you ever have you ever come to a house that had a mold problem to the point where like you just say I'm sorry <laughs> we can't <coughs> fix this house you know <coughs> you got to tear the house down. <coughs> in Cleveland, Ohio never. You don't have to tear the house down. Never. I mean I've read articles out you know out in California and out west where people like they move out of the house they go into hotels and then they tear down their houses that's all sensationalism it's not real no right? you don't have to tear down no. a house because you no. got mold no absolutely not you, you could clean the mold unequivocally could... yes now I have been in houses where we had to take all the drywall off down to the studs there's no question. And this, but this is a house that has a moisture problem. That you could, that you, had a moisture problem. And you, it was an active moisture problem, like an ice dam issue, something like that. Well, this that. was 
these houses normally are houses that maybe had a broken pipe upstairs and the water ran for a protracted period or a of time. cultured stone that's improperly installed, right? Could be, yes. But really, the really serious ones have been where they had leaks upstairs and broken pipes and the family was gone, so like say for a month to Florida, and they came home and found their home as a rainforest. And, and, and there was so much absorption. This has gone way beyond condensating mold. This is, this is total absorption of the drywall, 100% moisture on both sides of the drywall. You can't take the chance. You can't say, well, we'll leave that sheet of drywall because it is... But, but the drywall has been, has been damaged, right? And, right? Now, I get a, this, this is hypothetical. If I grab a street in Cleveland, 1930s, Okay. Right. And I picked a house, any house on the street. Right. And I took all the drywall off that house. Just right. What would I find after I take all the drywall off a 1930s <coughs> house? What would I see? You'd find the best wood in the world that you'll never find again. Because they, those are hundred year old trees that <laughs> right. they cut them all down. Right. All right. What else? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you, you generally would find that. Uh, a lot of it would be plasterboard, and uh, and it would have drywall over the plasterboard, and you'd find that the moisture the, the two foot sections or right, whatever you'd, size you'd find that the moisture had absorbed through the drywall, and the plasterboard was all clear, but the drywall was all bad. On the back. Yes. And then what about would you find mold? <sighs> yes, but it would be powdery mold. It would be like. Old, you know, powdery stuff. It could have been from anything, right? Like a right. leak from three years ago. That doesn't mean it's a problem, right? You you clean it. Okay. We you clean it with peroxide, and we have a we have something that it was invented by Dow about thirty years ago. It's called organosilane. Um, it is a covalent bond to the surface, and uh, once you clean it with peroxide and you put the biostat on, you're never going to have another problem. You know, you've been saying peroxide. This is like a, a not like the this peroxide a, that I buy. No, this is not your mom's peroxide. This is a special peroxide. That, yes. That it's a certain molarity. Yes. For you, what for your application? Yes. So it's not like I can go to the, to the drugstore and say I need peroxide to clean my mold, right? You. Yeah. It'd be pretty expensive, number one. And number two, it wouldn't be stabilized. So you leave the top off the peroxide bottle. You know what happens? It all dissipates. This is stabilized peroxide. You could so look at five gallons. This is special stuff. Yes. Yeah, it's it's just a, a type of peroxide. It's stabilized peroxide. Now. And it's 7%, by the way, which is three times, four times stronger than. Than what you buy at a store. But it's not dangerous. No. When I mean, you put it on the wood, right? It's no, perfectly no, safe. It's totally, yeah. What about these totally these old guys that go around with, like, UV lights <laughs> and, and, like, like, we have a company in Cleveland that goes around and they hook up these little machines and uh, they leave them for like two days and they say your mold's clean because they're using, uh, they're using, what, what, they got UV ozone. lights and ozone generators. Does that don't do anything for a house? Uh, well, UV light in a, uh, a contained space is a very effective mechanism. So UV lights in ductwork is good. Wrong. It's, I said in a contained space. I didn't say what if you, when you put two thousand cubic foot of air against that UV light. Do the math. It'd take about forty feet of UV light. Oh, so, so those systems with the two little light bulbs that go through the ducts don't do much. No. Okay. No, don't waste your money. I see those a lot. Well, every guy. It, for years, I had one in my house. I thought it was the big deal because I believed the brochure. And then, you know, then when I was you do the math? And it was, it was... Uh, because the air is blowing at 2,000 cubic... 2,000 two CFM. That's a lot of air, isn't it? Uh, it doesn't matter if it's 2,000 or 10,000. He's referring to velocity. Right. So the, the movement of the air hits those two light bulbs... Most of the air is not touch those light bulbs. It's just go right by it. And, and you need, with UV light, you need containment. You need a UV light in the ceiling shining down 
without any disturbance onto a surface and then it's effective. But then when you put velocity and turbulence into it, it's not effective. So, no, the, the, uh, the lights that are, have efficacy are, are the photocatalytic lights that generate a peroxide, peroxide radical and a hydroxyl radical, and, uh, and those lights are, are effective. You, 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 you're talking like a, some big words here. <laughs> what was that light called? A photo photocatalytic. Catalytic. They're they're becoming more commonplace in the market, and as a matter of fact, the supplier that we've been working with for six or seven years is now selling his units to the plumbing supply and the HVAC guys, the HVAC supply houses. So the supply houses now are selling them directly to the HVAC people. How does a how does a photo, what, what was it called? Photocatalytic. How does that work? A UV light activates a element, and the first elements were t uh, TiO2, which is titanium dioxide. And when the UV light hits the TiO2, it creates a peroxide radical, which is basically molecular peroxide. And it blows that peroxide out into the airstream and that is effective and then the hydroxyl radical is an oxidizer that replaces ozone and that takes care of odors but the hydroxyl has a half-life of a nanosecond so it doesn't go into the room but it's generated in a field around that element and, and then when the odors pass through it it, it, it knocks the odor down. Interesting. It is. Uh, That's a whole but, a whole science by itself. It is. Uh, NASA wrote on it uh, back in the uh, 90s, so when they were very favorable. Are they expensive? Photo, no. Photo no they're, they're, they're no more expensive really than the UV lights. Yeah. There is no magic bullet. Um, there's no magic bullet you, you, in, 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 this, in this whole procedure. There, there are elements. And, and uh, there are a number of elements involved. The first major element is controlling the moisture. The second major element is controlling the dust. Certainly, cleaning up the mold is important. The major element of, of the right air flow and pressure and, and, uh, and the right humidity levels in the house. Running a dehumidifier in the basement during the summer. We're not even going to take on the uh, fan in a box fallacy here. Uh, and they, th those are those those machines that they call air exchangers that they they just suck air out of your basement. It's like the fan in the box. Yeah. Right. We won't. Which millions know. and millions of homes have those. They do. Well, not millions have. and millions don't have them, but thousands and thousands have them. Yeah. Um, certain waterproofing companies give them away. Uh, Let me ask you a question. So. After we talked about broken homes, if you're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you two questions. One, what do you advise somebody buying a vacant home before it was fixed? If you could like tell them what they need to think about it, whether it's a two hundred three k, a VA, a HUD, or just a conventional cash deal. Right. Quickly, what would you say you you want to tell these people? Every bank owned house or house that has been vacant for over a year has mold, number one. Number two, check the drainage system. Those are the two basic things you've got to know. And so you that's got to be part of the program. And what would you tell the person who already bought that house, that had already been rehabbed, what would you tell that person? Number one, do an air test. Do an air test. And an inspection, a visual inspection and an air test. And these are the, the aerosol tests? Yes. Okay. And if it's 2,000 and grade like you stated, right. you have to start thinking about it. Right. And you do a visual as well. You do a combination air test and visual test inspection. And get your ducts cleaned. And those are the two real important things. And what about cl checking out the camera inspection for those people too? Not necessary at that point? Or are they, they're going to wait? Oh, well... <laughs> 
they've been living in the house by now. So they know if it's a problem. So they're going to know if it's a problem, and we're going to have a moisture meter. Part of our visual inspection is putting a moisture meter on those walls to see the, the, uh, the level of moisture and whether it's conducive to growing mold or not. So that's, that's why you on, don't only do just an air test. You do the visual as well. And there's one other thing. Oh, for, there's one other thing. For every realtor that shows bank-owned houses, please protect yourself. Please wear a P100 mask when you're going into these houses. And you don't have to get the big respirator kind. There's the, the little cloth masks that are P100s that I use as inspection masks all the time. And they're very easy to slip on and off. And that's minimal, the minimum standard, right? I mean, obviously, if there's a big asbestos problem, you should like see it and walk out because right. you don't want to disturb it, and okay. maybe take your clients to another house, right? Well, no, you can. Asbestos isn't that tough to clean up. Asbestos is easier than mold. It's not live. It's not growing. It's just and, and, and once it's gone, it's not. Once it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> right, and that's that's funny about asbestos Blend. and lead. You see it, you get rid of it. It's gone. It doesn't come back. Right. Now, mold comes back. Right. And and radon could come back if it's improperly removed, right? right. So we, there's... Wait, my duck cleaner called me the other day. We'd done a, uh, a crawl space job. And uh, the young fella had put in a, uh, a radon system. And Sean called me and he said, Jim, I've never seen a radon system installed like this. The, the cracks on the floors aren't sealed. And he said, but the biggest thing is, there's no sealed sump pump cover. The sump pump is wide open. How can they do a radon job like that? I said, he didn't do a very good job. So I no. called the guy's dad and I said, hey, Chuck, you better, you better call this guy. I don't think that radon job's done properly. So, so, so when you're, what you're saying is you're, you're going a little bit off, but you're saying that not only are you looking at the mold, you're looking at the building science, you're looking at the mold, water, moisture generators, you're also looking at other anomalies like floor cracks, radon right. systems, sub pumps that aren't sealed. Right. There's a, it's a lot of things. Oh, yeah. So the, really a homeowner may not be able to do this without an expert or professional. Generally, no, they don't. Because they don't know. No, they're not educated. There's too, just too many things. Right. And you take them too to many. Building Science 101 and you say, these are the things that you have to pay attention to. And, you know, and it's not rocket science. And they get it and they go, oh, yeah, okay. That makes sense. All right. You know, to my mind, there was an old saying in a, in a, in a discount clothing store that's no longer here. But they were around for years and years. And, and their saying was, an educated customer is our best consumer. And I really feel like that. The more that we educate our clients, the better customers they become. Is that a take? That's a take.